Hi, Joy. Hi. How are you doing? All right. <laughs> Lovely to see you. And you? Thanks can so you much. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Don't worry, everyone will let us know if they can't hear us. <laughs> okay. Hey, Joe. So I'll do a couple of notes of housekeeping, which everyone I'm sure knows by now, but just to remind everyone that um, because we start the live, that means Joy is on the bottom of the screen. Just tap your screen to reduce any of the comments down to one. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to see you and your lovely face and also anything that you display a bit better. <laughs> um, right, okay. Also that we are recording this for posterity to keep it um, available for everyone to see because these conversations have been wonderful and very important. Um, okay. So, you know, just if anyone doesn't want their comments to be seen um, forever on the internet, please don't comment or you might just not like to join at this point and watch um, later, not live. Uh, without further ado, I think we can dive in. <laughs> okay, go on. So, welcome, Joy. Thanks so much for taking the time to Thank you. join us. Um, we've been really looking forward to talking to you, especially about the Copper Plate Special Interest Group, um, right. which I know is celebrating 25 years this year. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I know you didn't start the group. You've been running it, though. You're the longest um, running coordinator of the group for the last 15 years. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd love to know a little bit about what was happening at the time in calligraphy, why this group was started back in 1995, who started it, who the key players were. Um, right. So I'll hand over to you to kind of take us down. Memory. Okay, <laughs> well, um, 30 years ago, there was hardly any interest in copper plate in the UK at all. Mm. It was really difficult to find a class. And uh, Jim Limwood, who started the group, he retired and he went to an evening class and they just did broad nib calligraphy, which he did for a while. And then he said what he really wanted to do was learn copper plate. And the teacher said she couldn't teach it. Mm. And so um, she put him in touch with Frederick Marnes, who was probably the only copper plate writer in the UK at that time. Right. Wow. And uh, he, she put him in touch with Fred Mm -hmm. and uh, he phoned him up and went to his house and had a private lesson. <laughs> so there's one teacher, one lonely student. <laughs> yeah, and Fred had never taught a one-to-one -one lesson before. He didn't do a lot of teaching. He, he worked in sort of commercial work okay. where the copper plate was considered you know, a, a good hand to have. Mm -hmm. But um, For design uh, and, purposes, you mean? Or? Yes, design. So it was commercial packaging and things like that, okay. which... It, it was um, it was just in the calligraphy world where it was looked down on. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and uh, yeah. Jim had this private lesson and he said he didn't actually pick up a pen. All he did was watch. Oh, okay. He watched Fred writing and then he thought, you know, it's difficult to learn copper plate. So he tried to, to write to 15 people. Mm -hmm. But there were different calligraphy groups in the country then you know mm -hmm. northwest calligraphers and yeah and, and uh, his own one in north downs mm. but he wrote to 15 people how did he choose thinking, those people did he did he think that they were people that might also be interested in yes copy? he thought well he'd write to different societies and say is there anybody in your group who's, who's interested in learning copper plate yeah and eight people said yes they were interested <laughs> Wow. So he had a little group of eight yeah. and he thought, you know, he'd, uh, he'd do a little newsletter, put people in touch with each other and try and grow it a little bit. Yeah. Because he, th he thought he couldn't be the only one in the country who wanted to learn it. Yeah. There must be others. Yeah. And so, so that, group... that first group of eight, um, you know, did it take then quite a while for this to still grow or did it kind of you know I guess they would have then had to well, burnt like that you what know. happened was um he he wrote to these 15 people he put an advert in Philip Poole's shop I was going to ask Drury about Lane. The, yes yeah that, that, that was a nib shop called his nibs I've seen the pictures it looks amazing it <laughs> looks fantastic it was fantastic I went once did you I went once. ask yeah yeah so we put a little advert in there thinking he might get some interest mm. people buying nibs and Jean Larcher from Paris saw it mm -hmm. Mm. and he wrote him a little note of encouragement oh 
and Jim wrote back straight away. He Jim is a fluent French speaker. Wow. Amongst other languages, and he yeah. wrote back to Jean Larcher and said, "You know, I'm really, I want to start something off here." Yeah. yeah. And he wrote it all in French, and Jean Lo wrote back, you know, full of enthusiasm, offering Ed to, to do anything he could to help. Oh wow. And that summer, he did a, a summer school in Repton in Derbyshire. Oh, which Jean Jim went to as a student. This was organised by class. Yes. Okay. The Calligraphy and Lettering Arts Society. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jean went as a teacher. Jim went as a pupil. Oh. Jean was a guest in Jim's house. And he drove up from uh, Caterham in Surrey yeah. Yeah. to Derbyshire. Not far from me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, you know, Jim's wife, Meg, she was alive then and she thought he was very charming. Yeah. Frenchman. Who, yeah. You know, she was delighted. And they have him as a house guest. Yeah, that Jean was larger than life. He's, you know, in, he in... certainly was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, in that summer school in Derbyshire, then uh, Brian Walker was also teaching, mm -hmm. not pointed pen stuff, but design. And uh, Rachel Yallop was a pupil of Jean Larcher mm -hmm. along with Jim. Yeah. So that so that little group of people got oh. together, and things started to to move on. Because I remember 30 years ago, if you said you liked copperplate, you were sort of um, well, that's looked true. down upon. That's what it said. People thought it, it wasn't proper calligraphy. They yeah. thought it was just handwriting or it was just, you know, stuff that clerks wrote in ledgers. Yeah. It, it wasn't <laughs> thought worthy of any sort of study. Yeah. So he, he really brought it back to life, Jim. Really breathed the life back into it. Yes, I, um, he did. I wanted to go back to, to um, learning from Fred. And, you know, Fred was the only person doing copperplate, not even teaching copperplate. Where did, no. you, know, you know where he learned to, to, you know, where did he learn? I do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I do. Tell me more. <laughs> he... Um, he went to school and uh, uh, he, but the teacher noticed that when he was writing anything off the blackboard, the different teachers, Fred's handwriting changed. And right. he said to him, well, you know, why, why is your handwriting different on every page? And he said, well, I'm just copying what's on the board. Oh, right. So he was copying the... exactly each teacher's style of writing. Wow. And he didn't. He thought, well, that's just what you know, is that unusual? But he <laughs> said he wasn't writing, he was drawing, drawing the letters. Okay. And his head teacher, he said he was, a, you know, not the best pupil, but the head teacher saw some talent mm -hmm. and gave him copper plate lessons. Ah, okay. And, oh. uh, and it went on from there. Yeah. His first job after leaving school, he was painting numbers on toy trains. Oh, <laughs> about two millimeters height oh my god wow yeah yeah but he, he taught himself he, he taught he? himself yeah yeah and because jim's got um a wonderful uh you know copper plate instruction that you provide when people sign up they can also you know pay a nominal fee and and get jim yeah, that's his, his class notes yeah his yeah. class notes which is lovely it's uh you know mm. it's really wonderful um i also wanted to just mention about uh well i want to ask about philip paul um, so he was the only one really supplying nibs in the UK at that time, is that right? Or, or pointed pen nibs? Or well, I suppose pointed pen nibs because uh, it was it, calligraphers weren't interested in pointed pen nibs. No, really, you know, thirty years ago. But cartoonists, artists, people oh, doing pen and wash, yes, they were, they were looking for pointed nibs. So more on the art side of things. Yeah, but he had a massive collection of, of vintage nibs, uh -huh. <laughs> and a lovely little shop. Yeah, the uh, yeah, which then it, it kind of went into Cornelison's. That... It went into Cornelison's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But his son John Poole still had a few of his nibs, which I've bought off him. Yeah, is that where you got and the Perry two does... from? <laughs> Sorry, I said, is that where you got the Perry two two sevens from? They're very hard to come by, Joy. <laughs> 
Have I got any of those? I you know. did have at a, at a workshop years ago. You, you gave me one actually very kindly. Um, lovely, lovely vintage nib, that one. You know, I've got so many nibs now. I don't know. <laughs> what to... I know. It was just last night going through my, my, uh, my little box. And I'm like, you know, ones that I bought when I first started calligraphy and didn't really know how to use yeah. them. And, and it's really nice to go back to your nibs and, and see how it well, works. The, the thing is, when I started, I taught myself. Hmm. And I, I thought, well, I did have Frederick Mann's little book. Yeah. Um, but it was actually my sister-in-law who um, got me into copper plates because she was doing an evening class in Manchester with Eunice Young. Okay. And my sister-in-law, Dorothy, went with her dad, you know, just to, to do something together when he retired and they did calligraphy and they did different styles. Hmm. And she ended up doing copper plate. Okay. And so when we got together, we'd talk about it. And she said, why don't you do it? Not because what were you doing at that time, Joy? What was your... I was doing all the broad nib. Yeah. The, mostly italic, really. Writing yeah. certificates and things like that. Yeah. But I was also painting posters. Yeah. Like <laughs> <a> day job. <laughs> but Dor that. Dorothy said to me, why don't, why don't you do copper plate? And I said, no, it looks too hard. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to do it. And she said, it's not as hard as italic. Yeah, and I, I thought really, maybe I'll give it a go. So I don't know. I'll... I'm on the other way, Joy. So I'm not quite sure if. I... <laughs> um, but I sent away. I sent away to Philip Hill for ten different um, pointed nibs, and I got ten holders, and I put them in, and I labelled them, and I had a go, and, and I had a sort of pile of yes, well, no, mainly no, yeah. maybe. And there was about a couple of them that I could get a line with. A nice hairline, yeah. Um, so I thought, but now if I try a nib, I've, I've got more sensitivity to it. You yeah. know, when you first start, you, they know you're what a you bit heavy-handed. Yeah. I held the pen too tight, I pressed too hard, so we had know, the I made all the mistakes. Uh, the wrong ink. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but I'm, I made all the mistakes. I tell, you know, if, you have, if you've got a teacher, they can tell you what not to do. Yeah, but I I just work my trial and error really. Yeah, which is so hard, and it's so great that you know I've you know I've been to a couple of your workshops, and I do find and you know I've talked to Cecilia about this that it is so important to have those in person moments because you just find stuff that you wouldn't yeah. even just from an. Yeah. I suppose it took me a lot longer because I was doing yeah. it on my own. If I'd had a teacher, they would have said, sure. you know, yeah. don't hold it like that, hold it like this, or try yeah. this, or don't press that hard. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you, you pick it up. Anyway, I um, I saw that Jim Linwood was coming to Oxford to one right. of the class regional days. And I, I thought, I'll go and see him. And I watched him write, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And I talked to him and he said, you can join this group. And I said, OK. Yeah. And there's an envelope exchange, which I joined. Yeah. And he was really, really encouraging and friendly. Yeah. And he used an oblique pen holder, which I'd never seen. Yeah. And that made it easier for me yeah. to start with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was using a straight pen holder because I had no idea. Yeah. And I was sitting a bit crooked mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was tense. Yeah. And I got a stiff neck and yeah. I had to go and have it, you know, manipulated and yeah and with the with the angle pen holder i was much more relaxed and i was at a better angle ah, fabulous. so that was good really but helped. now i can use either it doesn't bother me but okay just yeah. to start with it made such a difference to see jim do that yeah to watch somebody else and or to watch yeah. Jim, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> great i was really pleased yeah um, i was gonna say um you mentioned about brian uh brian joining the group and um, I think I read that he was the eighth. The eighth number eight group. out of the eight. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, going on, uh, looking at your um, dedication to Brian. I mean, there's so much to talk about all of these people who have been instrumental in really burgeoning copper plate in the UK and beyond. Um, yeah. You know, Brian was really instrumental in um, having the the Leonard Principal nib manufactured. Oh, yeah. Um, and also manufacturing and um, working closely at, you know, uh, to hand over to Simon at Scribblers about his own copper plate ink, you know, made to his own specific. Oh yes, his own recipe. Yeah. yeah. 
so you know i think i think that's just an amazing thing that he's done you know because not least because that's one of my favorite nibs to use <laughs> um yeah i've got mine i've got mine here <laughs> um yeah so i i mean i was it seems like it was very important to these supporters of gyms to make sure that they did kind of push it along and at the pace yeah, that because we felt we it was a bit of a you know we had a fight on our hands really yeah because there was a lot of people at that time who, who didn't mind saying that they hated copper plate yeah and i'm still doing bad. <laughs> you hate it no <laughs> i remember people saying Some... oh i don't like copper plate. it's not proper calligraphy it's not you know it's yeah. pointed nib it's not proper calligraphy yeah no, but I... things have changed over the last 25 years it's completely gone the opposite way now and everybody wants to do it and are you surprised you know, by, you, do you think has that been the biggest change that you've seen since the groups are in running is how much yeah it's yeah because you felt like you were a, a bit of a minority yeah and there was only a few people who liked copper plate and now well i suppose the internet as well yeah the, the internet has brought more people together because it wasn't badly thought of in America. It was very strong. And there were a lot of um, books and people teaching. It was just here, really. And I've just it's seen... A shame. Uh, um, Cecilia just asked, have you ever studied with Jean? I have, yeah. He yeah. stayed in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he came, came over for the weekend and taught a, a course in Northampton. Mm. Uh, and to be honest, I was a bit scared of him. Just yeah. Well, before he came, before yeah. he came, I was a bit into I was anxious. Yeah. But he was great. He he was um he is larger than life. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. And he taught this weekend course, and we spent the evenings, you know, having a glass of wine and <laughs> food together. And it was him who suggested that the newsletter be, um, well, it, it was just a few photocopies stapled together in the corner. Yeah. And I, I do remember him, we were sitting in the, the room upstairs and he had the newsletter like this in the thing and he just went, you know, <laughs> he swung it from the staple and he said, you can do better than this. <laughs> and I thought, well, that never occurred to me. I had no idea. Um, I've jumped a bit to, to when I'm running the group now. I have, haven't I? Oh, that's fine. Now we can go wherever we want. That, that was right. Lot. Anyway, he lot. said, <laughs> you can do better than this. Yeah. And we looked, I had some other newsletters from other groups and he said, what about this one? I think it was from, well, I can't remember the name of it now, Mercy and Scribes. They oh, yeah. had a sort of an A3 paper folded in half, stapled in the middle, colour. And he said, this is what you want to do. Yeah. So I felt obliged then. I had to do what he said. <laughs> <laughs> did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, he did the logo. Yeah. And then we didn't have a um, the title, so Frederick Marnes designed that. Oh, I should. Oh, this is going to be back to do it. Yeah, should do it the right way. Frederick Marnes designed that to try and incorporate uh, Jean's flourishing to make it fit in together. So I've still got the original of that that Fred oh, did. Yeah. And this is Jean. That's Jean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was only 68 when he died. That that was a real shame because he was, uh, you know, not just copper plate, but all sorts of calligraphy, logo design, typography. That's Jim. That's Jim in, in his older years. I'll, I'll try and find a picture of him when he was a bit younger. Think. Um, Cecilia is also asking if you're able to show that original that you were just talking about. Um, might have to search for it. While you're searching, I did just want to show. I'll show the envelope. Okay, I'll search for it. Hang I on. mentioned. So, um, being a member of the Chiswick, um, of course, sadly, when you know, sad when Jim died, um, his wife gave joy all of the exchange envelopes, and Joy might correct me if I'm wrong, but all of all of the exchange envelopes that Jim had received and Joy very kindly um, donated them to members. 
so I just wanted to show this absolutely amazing envelope that Jean sent to Jim. I'll do it this way. Oh, sorry. Isn't that just, wow. Yeah, we like to write big. Yeah. I, um, and he did he did the pointy top style, which, which um, Rachel, Rachel Yallop has um, has taken over now. Yes, which you know it does take some getting used to that style. It's, it's um, different. Yeah, I went on a course with the well, I did the course with Jean Lorche for the weekend. Yeah, but he wanted us to write two twenty millimeters high, which is pretty big. I, mean, I could not. That I don't. I, I, I found yeah. that really hard. It's really hard. I found um, that really hard. But then I did a course with Rachel, and I keep forgetting to put the pointy top on because I've already pressed to make it square. Yes, I'm the same. I kind of have half a word that's kind of weird square so, top, not square. <laughs> it's quite. It's quite good to sort of know what people are doing. Yeah. So if I'm teaching, I can say, you know, Rachel Yallop does it like this after Jean Marche. Yeah. Um, you know, Jim did it with a square top because yeah. he was trying to copy Fred. Yes. I'm trying to copy Jim. Yeah. We're all trying to copy somebody and not quite getting there. So we get end up with our own style really. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's lovely as well. You know, you never it's know how, what... it, how, it, uh, how it evolves. Now, do I turn my camera around? Yes. And just before you do this original, um, we just had a question how on the envelope that I was just showing, uh, Hillary's asked, how did Jean get those really intense widths? Was it just the nib that he pressed used? Hard. Pressed hard. Yeah, pressed hard. He pressed hard. He wasn't Perfect. scared of breaking a nib, you know. He <laughs> yeah. really... He was I a big bloke. A style, that. <laughs> he was a big bloke and, and he could put pressure on the nib and he wasn't scared of it. Yeah. Whereas, well, I think some nibs are more flexible. But yeah, I think I, you've got to wear them in a bit. You can't yeah. do it on a brand new nib. You've got to wear them in. A bit of... Want. But uh, and another guy presses, uh, does very wide strokes. That's Hamid Ebrahimi in Iran. Hamid? He, he often does a page for the calendar. Oh, and he, yeah. he puts loads of pressure on. Ibrahim. I, I was actually trying to get the calendar just before and I couldn't find it, so I don't know if I've got an example. Yeah, I'll, I'll just try and show you this original if I can so press can you that. See? Yeah, perfect. Can you see that? Yeah. So this is the original of the... Um, Copper plate special interest group down a little bit. Yeah. Wow. And I've got some of Fred's things that's, that's got white out on it. You know, if he's got a little wobble or something. Okay. He said, don't worry about putting bits of, not, not Tipex, but Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. Yeah. Um, he said, the better you get, the less you'll start, you know, you'll have to put more the white on. Is there any, there's, but there's nothing on that, is there? There's no tipex on, or uh, wide out on that. Not on that one, but I've got others that's got the tiniest bit you would hardly notice. Oh, wow. And did I've John an do, uh, oh, I think just... Here's one of my envelopes from Jean Lorche. Mm. <laughs> did he use a straight or oblique holder? Always straight. Mm -hmm. But he didn't let anybody use an oblique mm -hmm. pen holder in this class. Yeah. Yeah, always straight. Yeah, amazing. And Jim used an oblique one. It just goes to show everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you do what, whatever you find <laughs> easiest. Yeah. Um, I was going to also ask, I know we talked about, um, you know, one of the biggest thing changes that you've seen is being the acceptance of copper plate and even the, um, you know, just how it's enhanced in the last 25 years. But I did want to ask if there were any key highlights from your, well, from your tenure as coordinator or even over the last 25 years of Chiswick, um, any key highlights that stand out to you? I mean, just you talking about these, your time with these guys sounds like a wonderful highlight. So. I think when I think about it, it's meeting the, the people who've been involved with it. That that's what's um, yeah the best thing for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and I didn't do that many classes to start with. Although mm. I did 
when Jim was teaching, I would go and have some lessons from him. But I've the ones you've been putting on, I've really benefited from. Oh, I'm really glad. I love the teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, meeting Heather Held and yeah. and just and yeah. it, but not just the the you know the calligraphy community and this is just my short experience is so wonderful and so it is it is well, because when I was learning, I, you, you're pretty isolated, really. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and there wasn't anything going on in Northampton. There's no group. No, until um, later on when Nicola Dunn moved to Northampton. And she started Northampton Scribes. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Her, well, her and Linda Allen started Northampton Scribes. Yeah. Okay. And now we're quite a thriving group. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I think the community through the internet as well, the um, the Instagram and different yeah. different groups are very yeah. um, encouraging to each other. Yeah. You know that you're not on your own anymore. You can no. you can meet people. You can get together but I think the thing with the copper plate group is you get uh, the newsletter which you can physically look at it's not on yeah. the screen yeah I, I love, like that and I do love that um and it, it's kind of stayed true to the group has stayed true to Jim's vision I think for the last 25 yeah, years I think I think we're never going to forget him no. and he'll always be a big part yeah. of it yeah so just having that sort of tangible um you know the magazine every quarter and and not just that it's it's what's included in that the information that you share you you see other calligraphers names so you know <coughs> it's just takes it back offline um you, you start to see the names of the people in the uk that you might want to look up and you might want to connect with and yeah or you might and, say oh, and people have stuff. said like people have said to me oh there's nothing going on where i live and I've looked down the address list and seen there's five people who live, you know, not too far away. Yeah. And uh, because of data protection and everything, I've said, yeah. you know, I'll give them your email. And they They're got to, in yeah. touch. They yeah. meet around somebody's kitchen table sometimes, yeah. you know. Yeah. You can get together and do things as a group because you don't want to be sitting on your own all the time. And that's, um, no, not at all. I mean, sometimes you do, but. <laughs> you get well, you so have to sometimes, but it's nice to have a bit of like somebody you could talk to about it and have yeah. a chat and yeah, you know, share yeah. stuff. I was, um, you know, in the in the twenty fifth edition newsletter, um, there's a an article from Henry Love about mentorship, and we'll get onto the because we actually haven't talked very much about the group itself, which is yeah. which is fine. We'll get onto that now, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to kind of read out this little bit that. Um, about Henry's take on what it is to be a mentor. And I think that kind of talks to what you, you know, it, it's about what you were just mm -hmm. talking about. So, you know, it says a mentor is a personal trainer, not a TV demonstrator. So it's really about having someone yeah. there to guide you. Um, the process continues until the breakthrough happens. It will happen. Then the relationship changes to one of discussion, new challenges and fun. Meantime, a bond is formed that blossoms for both parties. And I think that really, yeah. I know it's talking specifically about mentorship, but I think that really s sums up that connection that's made. It's between... brilliant because he had a mentor when he started. In fact, I met him at the Pen Show, the London Pen Show, when I was oh. demonstrating and yeah. representing the group. And he was thrilled to bits with it all. And then, yeah. you know, he's, he's paying a bit back by offering it to somebody else. And um, yeah. it's great. Yeah. It's and so great. let's let's talk talk technicalities of the group. Um, we know it's been running for 25 years, um, started in 1995, and it started with eight members. Yeah. Um, where is it at at the moment? We've got, and I'm assuming all those members are in the UK, um, but I do no, know that... No, not all in the UK. No, we've got oh. mostly in the UK, because that's where yeah. there was nothing going on. Yeah. Um, um, a few in Australia, Japan, wow. uh, Belgium, Sweden. Yeah. yeah. And it's up at around 150, something like that, membership. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it fluctuates. Yeah. You know, some people join, some people join and leave. It maybe not for them, or yeah. rejoin later. Yeah, because it's an annual subscription. Is you know that they yeah resubscribe yeah. every year, and that subscription includes the um, choice to have a mentor if they want to. Um, yeah, they can just say I fill, they fill in a form every year saying 
you know, I'd like to have a mentor or I'm asking people for information if they teach uh, copper plate, where they teach it so I can pass that on. Oh, it's all about passing information yeah. and um, they can join the envelope exchange. Yeah. I they love the... Ask to have a mentor. <laughs> they can yeah. offer to be a mentor. Yeah. They can send a page for the calendar. So I'll try to make it inclusive yeah. and yeah. You know, interactive. That's yeah. the thing. It definitely feels like everyone is welcome to contribute. You know, you have contributions yeah. to the newsletter from, you know, all all around all different topics there's you know there's book recommendations there's yeah. um, product reviews there's nib recommendations um there's a, a, adver um, advertising events you know so the pen show um yeah it's it's such a wonderful resource to have um that was so we've got the exchange the newsletter and mentorship which is the key activities of the group and yeah. you're actually you're going to be handing over the reins well soon. i thought you know last year maybe it's time to to stand aside and, and let somebody else do it yep so i've an outstanding job <laughs> it's been amazing pardon well i mean when i look at what all the all the elements that it takes to to run the group and i know how long it takes to curate a newsletter um that you've been doing this on your own you know it's 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 great that you've got a support team now to, to hand that over to. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was it was probably getting a bit much, really. And I, I'd made a few mistakes, which I was a bit embarrassed about. You know, I oh. left a whole page of people off the envelope exchange and yeah, I felt a bit bad. <laughs> and I thought, oh, dear, I could do with some help. Yeah. So Anne Jameson in Lewis in uh, Sussex uh -huh. took over the envelope exchange. Yeah, also doing... So she does all the organisation for that, does okay. it very well. Yeah. And uh, Heather McCombie has taken over the mentoring. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants a mentor or wants to be a mentor, to get in touch with her and she pairs them up. Okay. And is there any requirements on either side for the mentors, mentor scheme to join? Or to, no, you know, I don't think so. Well, you've got, I suppose you've got to be fairly good to be a mentor yeah or you'll get i mean I, I suppose you're going to be a few steps ahead but i think you have to have a bit of confidence yeah. helping to see what's wrong with somebody's work yeah yeah you've, you've, you've got to get through a certain stage before you can say oh they're not doing this bit right or they might try yeah. this that's the other so, thing that henry mentioned that it is about the early work is analysis it's all about analysis and working out you know, yeah. actually, and you don't know what you're doing wrong and you don't know no. you're holding the pen too tight and you don't know that you're pressing too hard yeah and you it might be don't know. Um, you need somebody to tell you yeah um and that somebody is um you know they might have different goals in mind for what they want to achieve from the mentorship so being aware of you know where they want to end up is is probably a big part yeah. of that yeah um, they, they can do that through the post. I mean, not everybody's got a computer, actually. Yeah. So you can either scan it and email it or you can post it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the lines are so fine that it doesn't reproduce well. So sending the actual real work is, is the best. Yeah. And then the mentor can say, try this or try that, do a few examples and, yeah. and help them along. It's supposed to last about six months. So, yeah. so there's a cutoff point. And uh, when I set it up, I suggested they send them a little gift or yeah. something to say yeah. thank you. Not not a lot, you know, maybe something like a fiver to say yeah. thanks, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. I mean, some mentors I've heard keep the students on for a lot longer or take on more and more students because they just like doing it. Yeah. Now, we've had a few questions coming through. a nice hobby. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, we had a few questions coming through just in terms of membership. Can anyone join? Is it worldwide membership? I know you've mentioned you've got people in Australia. Yes, anybody can join. Um, at the moment, we're not quite ready to pass over to the new membership secretary, Katie May. Okay. Although I've printed off letter headings for her. I can't get to my printer because of the lockdown. Okay. So, at, you know, until we actually pass everything over and it'll all be on the class website okay under special interest groups okay and that's class class c-l-a-s.co.uk c-l-a-s calligraphy and lettering arts society yeah. special interest groups 
and it's the only one. There the used to be three, but this is the only one now. Okay. So you can join through me still. Okay. Bye. And then when Katie's ready, I'll pass everything over and I'll still be helping with the newsletter. Alex Gonaldi in Manchester is going to be doing that. Yeah. And I'll be helping her. Thank you. Yeah. But, you know, and, it's not all on my shoulders anymore. Yeah, exactly. And the cost, you know, I remember in the UK, it's um, it's £13, I think. Do you remember? Yeah, and the... 21 for overseas. Okay, thank So that you. costs, that, that covers the cost of the printing of the newsletter and the postage, and that's it. Yeah. Everything's yeah. voluntary. Nobody gets paid. I know. I know. So we all appreciate it very much. Um, we know how much work is involved in doing that. Um I had a couple of other questions about the, the group. We've talked about the changes since running the group. I wondered if there were any particular challenges that the group faced um, or that you as a coordinator have faced besides the fact that Copper Plate wasn't so well regarded. Do you think there's anything else or has it been running pretty smooth or, and also leaving a page off there? No, it's been, it's been running pretty well, actually. I mean, you wouldn't have stuck no. around for 15 years otherwise. Would <laughs> no, I wouldn't have done. If it had been that difficult, I'd have, I'd have stopped. <laughs> Yeah. But people are, are willing to send things in and, you know, I've been able to ask people. I've been yeah. able to, to write to, or email people and say, you know, I run this group. Can you send me something, a bit of history yeah. or examples? Yeah. And I've had a lot of top calligraphers sending things, which is great. I know you've got had some beautiful um, uh, covers uh, sent in from... You know, you've got, as you mentioned, Rachel Yellup. I was just going to quickly show some of these covers for the newsletter. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. I was on that workshop. Oh, Should wow. be a, a joy somewhere. Somewhere in there. I think over here by my... Oh, no, that's Jan. You're up the top left. And then we've got Heather. Oh, that's, yeah, that's Heather. And what was the other one? I've got, you've got two from Heather, actually. But, um, uh, Maria Helena, it's lovely work after that workshop. Yeah. And then but, there was yeah. Eleanor Winters. I can't, I don't think I've got that one. It might have been, I go back circa 2015. She's not on the cover, she's on the inside. Oh, inside, okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just checking questions again. Do you meet up with social events between members, as in specifically on Copper Plate? There's not really any. Not, not really, no. If if we have a meeting, it, it's it's just a workshop. So we'd have a, a workshop, and we'd meet. But no, not really, because we're too spread spread yeah. out. But does the group organise workshops as well, or is it more that if oh, there's well, we advertise workshops. Oh, we... So I say, yeah, anybody might... who's got any copper plate workshops, let me advertise them so they let me know, and then we put it on. Yeah. And I had a question about. Um what being part of a group like this, how it's beneficial. I mean, I know personally, that I'll let you answer what you think as well, but um, I know my, my answer from being in the group, but um, how is it beneficial to a calligrapher's practice and their continued study being in, a, in Chiswick, do you think? Well, I think being in a group is good because you're not on your own. Yeah. And, you know, you might be thinking, oh, I can't be bothered doing any tonight or any practice and I have to feel like I'm any good. And then you get your newsletter and you think, oh, I'll have another go. Yeah. Or you see somebody's work and think, oh, they're only a beginner, I'm a bit better than that. Or yeah. you see somebody's work and you think, oh, I'll never be as good as them. So yeah. you, you, I think you see a range of, mm. of work. Yeah. And I think that's encouraging, really. You don't that just want to see up. perfect stuff. I was going to say it might be a nice um, a thing to include at some point if if some of the more experienced calligraphers would be willing to share their past work, so that. Well, I found some of mine actually. I've, yeah. <laughs> I found some of mine, which I will put in. Yeah. I yeah. will put in, and um, you know, I'm not embarrassed no, yeah, because everybody um, has got to, you know, make progress, and I think and I say to people because they expect it to be perfect and they want perfection. I say, it's not, you're never going to get it perfect. Nobody does. Mm. But you've just got to go through all the stages and there's a stage where it looks really naff and people don't like that. You've, yeah. you've got to get through that and not give up. Yeah. It's the, like the, the stuff I've got looks a bit naff, 
but I can see now I know a bit more what I've done, what I did wrong. Yeah. And, um, and people can benefit from that. They, they can see. Yeah. I agree. No, yeah, I definitely, so it's, I think there is a gap, you know, when people start and especially with Instagram, you see a lot more of people showing their best work. Um, yeah. So I think it is important to, for people to understand that everybody started in a hot mess somewhere. <laughs> like, you know, it's, yeah, uh, I still remember sitting, I'm, I used to have my desk on the other side there, but I had Frederick Mann's book in front of me and I was practicing, practicing, practicing. And I'd be stopping like halfway through a word thinking, how do you join that to that letter to that letter? And I'd be looking. So, so you, you're looking down to your writing, but up to the book. So you're mm. constantly doing this. Mm. And then eventually you can do it without looking. But I still remember that. Yeah. That maybe 20 years ago. Which, which then makes me think back to the story you told about Jim learning from Fred and how he just watched. And t yeah. you know, can you imagine just going to a workshop and just, just watching, like just that's, watching. How yeah. valuable! But we never think that's. Well, he we... was thrilled with that, and then the next <laughs> thing he did was, um, you know, go go to Jean Larcher's yeah. workshop. Yeah. But he didn't do Jean Larcher's style. He did the square top style. Um, Paul Freddie. Freddie did a book. He hasn't seen it. He How did do a book. Freddie's book. I've got it somewhere. <laughs> this is Freddy. Oh. And what, what is that? the book? What's his uh, instruction Sorry. on? I'm trying to show Freddy's photograph. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a little tiny book. Writing copper plate. Is that back to front? It is, but... We can see. Yeah, it's only a little book, and it, it's got the alphabet with arrows that, and a big, a big dot where you start. Because actually, you don't know if you just look at a book yeah. where you start. Yeah. It's got a big dot, and then arrows of the direction of the strokes. Maybe are you able to show us one of those pages just to see? Yeah, I'll turn the, the thing around here. Ah, okay. That's my that's my ink block. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Actually, this is this yeah. is the front of it. Very well well weathered. Lovely. He didn't have all that many printed, but he, he nice. gave me his very last copy. Oh, and said design. that I could reproduce it for the group so I've made it twice as big so it's easier to see yeah <laughs> and he, he was really <laughs> happy about that you go back through my through my notes that's really kind that he did that actually um we are we're making good time we've got about 15 minutes left oh wow uh yeah <laughs> so I was just going to put the word out if anyone would like to ask any questions while we're continuing this last bit of chat. Hold on, Paul says. Ah. Paul has a copy of this page in his book. Oh. And he taught me how to write off the edge of the desk. Wow. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, he, he was a, a, a wonderful um, artist as well. He he had about 50 pencils sharpened already, you know, lined up and he'd yeah. do some beautiful pencil drawings and he would copy exactly what he saw. Oh, wow. Really, very, so very detailed. Say, and what? he only had one eye. Did you know Did that? He? No. He lost an eye when he was doing his national service in the RAF. Yeah. In a boxing match. <laughs> so from quite a, you know, a young man, he... He actually only had one eye. Obviously not to his detriment with calligraphy or art artwork. No, he said he could focus better actually <laughs> with this. Oh, that's funny. Um, I wanted to ask if you had any advice to give to pointed pen calligraphers, um, you know, something about finding the right nib. I know, I remember you telling me in terms of um, 
because I, you know, I'm quite heavy handed finding that lightness of touch. I remember you saying that, I don't know who it was that told you, but they suggested that you should imagine your tips of your fingers have been. No, it was me who burnt my fingers. Oh, you burnt yours. It and was me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'd forgotten all about it till you reminded me. Yeah. Yeah. That workshop when I said, I was writing, so I was under pressure to, to meet a deadline to write envelopes, mm. loads of them. Mm. And I just stopped to have something to eat. And mm. I put some something in the microwave. Can't remember what it was. Yeah. Put it in for a bit too long. And when I took the plate out, I, the I plate. burnt my fingers. Oh, and I, you know, you think, what a stupid thing to do. Just, But when I sat down again, my fingers were sore. Mm. And I could... I still had to f finish the envelopes and meet the deadline. Mm. And I held the pen so lightly because it hurt. But but when I looked at the writing afterwards, I thought it's better than it usually is. So yeah. it made me realise that that light touch does improve your um, your writing. Thank you for writing. So you advocate this is anyone a, to burn their fingers. In but... fact, it, it, I was at an italic handwriting workshop when they said, hold your pen lightly so somebody can steal it off you. Yeah. You know, it's like you're holding your pen and if somebody can whip it out of your hand. Yeah. That's about the grip. Yeah. Because I, I used to hold it really tight. Yeah. Nobody could have taken my pen at one time, but I've learned to have a lighter touch. Yeah. And I think that's a good good knowledge that you can actually change you know because everyone gets a bit disheartened and think oh gosh I can't you know yeah there's just... more than one way to hold a pen you know yeah. but you, you don't know till somebody tells you you just think yeah. that's the way you hold it that's the way you hold your biro that's the way you hold your copper plate pen but you can yeah. try different ways you know you can try different heights to hold it yeah not too flat I don't think but people don't think and unless you say try and hold it like this they don't even realise that, that that's a thing. An option, yeah. You just kind of grab it and, and go just with it. grab it and hold it like a biro. Mm. And we all have different biro grips as well, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah. Paul says, exactly how the Chinese calligraphers tell you to hold the brush so that the teacher can pull it out of your hand. <laughs> ah, no, I was heard. I was told that they hold it really tight so you can't take it out of the hand oh. with the brush. Interesting. And I thought that's the opposite. I don't know. I've only I'd done... have to I've check done... that one out. Yeah. I'm not sure now. Brush class, and I, I don't think it came up, actually. We were all too focused on getting the angle of the the brush. Yeah, and, <laughs> and when, when you're learning and you're thinking about the angle, you know, the, the, the slope line, you, you forget you're thick and thin, and you yeah. it's hard to get all the things together coordinated at the same time like you you concentrate on your thick and thin and then your angle goes yeah so it's it's just going through all the stages don't worry if it doesn't look right but keep going and eventually with practice you start to coordinate all the things together yeah. it's not easy but you no. know it's not um it's not rocket science no and as my sister-in-law said it's not as hard as italic and I think it's right. I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is tricky. No, I think there's, yeah, there's a few letters that still get me. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But you're not, you're not, you know, if you're looking for perfection, you'd, you'd use a typeface, wouldn't you? That's true. That's true. It's got to have a bit of a human touch to it. Yeah. Um, I think my last question um, before we go is, um, we've been trying to think of, things that challenge us as calligraphers and whether, you know, we've found ways to overcome difficulties that we've faced. It might be something very basic or, you know, because I think like you were saying, these are the things that we don't necessarily say out loud and nobody knows and nobody knows that they have the same problem as another calligrapher. So I just wondered if there've, there've been any challenges that you faced as a calligrapher, technically speaking. Um, well, loads. <laughs> Some key ones. I just struggle through them. But I think nowadays people are more um you know willing to share stuff like that on various Facebook groups or Instagram groups and yeah and things. And you can say you can put something on and say, What am I doing wrong? and somebody will tell you. 
Yeah. That's whereas good. I would look at mine and not know what I was doing wrong. Mm. Uh, there was one tip that Jim gave, because I did a lot of tracing as well. I don't mind admitting it. Oh, okay. I would get a nice envelope, put some tracing paper over it and try and copy it. Mm. But he said the better way is to draw the same um, guidelines mm -hmm. and then write yours, write the same thing and then put your work over the original oh. work and see where it's different. That's a really you good probably idea. learn more by doing that. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Thanks, Joy. Yeah. <laughs> that's really, I've never thought to do that, actually. That's um, a really good suggestion. Well, anything else you want to know? What else can I show you? Well, it, it can show us anything you like. We've got a free 10 minutes, nine minutes, Joy. You can... <laughs> right. Go uh, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you a bit of Brian Walker's lovely oh, yes, writing. Please. Oops, can you see that? Not yet. Oh my gosh. And Brian, um, was he the only British uh, Iron Perth master penman? Wow. He was the only master penman for Iron Perth mm. in the UK. Stop. Yeah, and he, he he loved copper plate, but he went on to do more um, ornamental penmanship. Spencerian yeah. is Brian. Mm. And he said, I mean, I used to go and see him in um, in Barnsley because yep. my younger son lives in Leeds, and I was driving past Barnsley you know, quite a lot. So I ended up go going to see him and spending time with him and his wife. And yeah. he was great. And he sat sit in his studio and he'd show me what he'd been doing. Yeah. And it was just brilliant. Mm. And I'd watch him write Spencerian. Unbelievable. Yeah. Such a light touch. Yeah. You know, amazing. Yeah. But he was an art teacher. He'd been an art teacher all his life really and a head teacher mm. so he had all that artistic background as well yeah. as the calligraphy oh it's it's um it's wonderful that you've been able to spend time with these people and yeah, yeah. Our, our, our favorite thing was doing card tricks <laughs> <laughs> he was brilliant he was in the magic circle yeah yeah he never showed me any i had to learn no. them myself but yeah that's another thing i thought i'll never be <laughs> any good at that <laughs> just another thing um joy uh sorry joe taylor asked if you've been to iampeth no no i haven't no mm. i'd love to but mm. i've never been to iampeth good no i thought i was pretty good going on the class summer schools now and again <laughs> um i also i just noted something in the in my reading today oh sorry um cecilia did ask about she wanted a sneak peek of the the 25th um, newsletter, but I, I, I don't think I think sent it to her by email. But it's out already, isn't it? So, I mean, I've it got was it. sent by email because we couldn't get it printed this time because of the lockdown. I think my favourite part of it, so I'm just going to show, I have highlighted things, but um, uh, Jim's original letter um, yeah. inviting these, uh, you know, people to, to join the group. Don't mind my highlighting, obviously. Uh, so this was the very first letter. Yeah. And the bit that I've highlighted is about um, calligraphy, though, to most people today means writing with a broad nib. Copper plate has moved back as the other hands have moved forward. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Not anymore, thanks to Jim, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Not exactly. anymore. So that's a lovely, um, you know, some lovely pieces in the 25th. Yeah, uh, and that that was Jim's house on it on his letter heading there. Was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went to his house. It was um, it was really interesting because he collected penguins, and he had I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds oh, right. of penguins, penguins like yes. ornaments. Yeah. So My mum did that for dolls. I don't know. I think people that you you start to collect them and then people. Just keep yeah, his wife is. I think he, he he told me the story. They were living in Paris. That's how he got to 
speak French with Jean Marchais, but they were living in Paris and he wanted to buy an expensive camera. And she said, well, if you're buying that, I'd like this penguin, <laughs> like a big brass penguin. And so we said, OK. And that was the number one. And then after that, it was a penguin everywhere they went. <laughs> yeah, right. And it was really easy to buy a gift for because if I saw anything with a penguin on it, I'd get it. Exactly. And I went to go and see him. I'd, and he was thrilled to bits. Oh, he was good. thrilled to bits. Good, good. Um, th have had, uh... There were rather a lot of them. <laughs> I, uh, would you mind sharing who your pointed pen hero is? Well, the, the person I think has um, influenced me the most is Mike Kessig from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I first, because he's done a lot of variations, uh, the pointed pen unsealed being one of them. Mm -hmm. And one of my envelopes from my, the envelope exchange was from a guy in Sydney called Heng Chiu Chiam. Mm -hmm. And he sent me a beautiful envelope. The, 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 my name, like the joy bit, was in copper plate, but the rest was in pointed pen on seal. And yeah. I've never seen anything like it. This is a long time ago. Yeah. can't remember when. 2002, I think. And, and he put a little letter in and said, I'm, I'm sorry that the... It was in white on dark. He said, it's gone a bit pink. And so he was apologising. But I was, I've was i still got that envelope. And yeah. I show people when I teach the point of pen on sale. But yes. he said Mike Kessig had uh, done a workshop with them. And I bought the speedball book with the alphabet in. And I've been in touch with Mike and said, you know, I love this style. Can I teach it? And, and he gave me the, the thumbs up. Um, and I asked him how to pronounce his name properly as well. It is Kessig. Kessig, thank you. That's Hungarian. Always... Yeah, oh, Hungarian, okay. Um, well, or or Hungarian origins, but it looks like Kessig, but it's Kessig. Kessig. And, uh, you know, it, he's just so inventive with the pointed pen. Mm. He's done lots of variations. And Rachel Yallop's doing lots of variations now. Yes. That's so it's, it's really yeah. moving on. You know, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And I love who that. Who would have thought? Oh, we've got two minutes remaining. So, you know, I love the combination of, because um, I've, I've seen that and I've tried it myself as well after doing your Unseal, pointed pen Unseal mm. um, workshop. I love that script. And it's so beautiful when combined with the, you know, the, the copper plate script. They're such a nice complement to each other. Um, yeah. So I love that you don't have to have a broad edge nib to do that contrast. You can actually find it within pointed pen itself. Yeah, so he's taking a really old script and, and mod, you know, doing a modern version of it, which is yeah. is great. It's wonderful the way things are moving on now. Yeah, yeah. Well, we certainly appreciate that you've taken the time to talk to us tonight and um, and happy celebrations for this year and, and also Thank for the handover. You. It all goes smoothly. Um, you've shared some wonderful insights, so we really can't thank you enough. If anyone's got any final comments, please put them in now. We've got one minute remaining of our hour for this evening. Joy, thank you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for asking. Oh, it's been a pleasure. You've been a real gem. <laughs> All right, everyone, you'll, you'll see, see you the comments again. coming up there. So you can just see them before we close it off. Big hugs to Heather. <laughs> hugs back. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It's been wonderful to have you all here. Thank you, Cecilia. Thanks, Paul. Bye, Saron. Thank you. Oh, I'm inspired oh, too. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really lovely. You're very calming, Joy. You've got such a calming. <laughs> have calming. I? Oh, that's yeah. nice to know. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Always have. <laughs> Everyone's very welcome. We look forward to seeing you on this Thursday um, with Paul Antonio. Come and join Great. us here on live. All right. See you then. Yeah. yeah. See you then. Right. Thank you. Bye, Bye for now. Bye. Bye.